Through almost four weeks of war and the most unspeakable conditions, Anna, a neurologist, worked and lived in the Mariupol City Hospital. Now in the relative safety of Lviv, she tells me of her ordeal. During the heaviest bombardments, we had around 50 patients an hour arriving a day. The hospital was so overcrowded and the windows, doors and roof were all destroyed. Stay down. Not long after, it got even worse. The Russians cut the water supply. We would gather snow, rainwater, use the water from inside the boilers and disinfect it. So many patients were dying, she tells me, they were forced to put the corpses outside in bags. The worst thing was when the relatives would come to look for their loved ones. They had to open all the bags. The bitter cold, their saving grace, as it prevented the worst of the stench. What I saw, I think that even the most perverted minds wouldn't be able to imagine. The night of the 20th of March, I named this night the genocide. This was the night when the bombings just wouldn't stop. Every time we heard a bomb coming, I was lying and thinking, I would cover my head like that and think this one will be the one that gets us. A moment comes and it's hard to comprehend. A moment when you want it all to be over. In a good way, that you survive. Or in a bad way, and you die. And you don't care how you die, just as long as it's all over. And soon it would be. She and a few of her colleagues took their chance to escape. We were driving, and then in the distance we saw our flag, our blue and yellow flag and Ukrainian troops. One of them gave me a hug, and it's weird, but I asked him, can I be a Ukrainian here? Is it safe? And he said, yes, you're at home. Alive, but dead inside, she tells me as she faces a life haunted by what she's witnessed. When the world sees what happened in Mariupol, it will be butcher multiplied by 10, by 100, by 1,000.